Hello, welcome, I'm Letty. Today we're going to do a class for the liver and gallbladder and the kidneys and urinary bladder, a yin class. As you guys know, we hold our yin poses for three to five minutes, depending on the pose, typically. So we give the muscles time to relax and we get into the deeper tissues, the fascia, the tendons, the connective tissues. And we're doing liver bladder, your emotions, your sleep patterns, the kidneys and the urinary bladder, which is your energy, your willpower. So we try to stabilize that, stimulate it, and find that rest that we can find in yin yoga. So let's start by just setting up. I'm sitting on a blanket. If you have props, bring them with you. It'll help. I have two blocks. If you don't have blocks, a book will do. Some thick books, maybe of the same height and width. And then a bolster. We'll be using that in a blanket. And again, if you don't have a bolster, you can use a, your couch pillow or maybe a big lumbar pillow the kind you might squeeze between the thighs when you're pregnant. So go ahead and sit up on your blanket if you have one. Roll your inner thighs back. I'm spiraling my inner thighs back. My sits bones widen a little bit. And right away I'm sitting up out of my lower back. And we'll just get centered here for a moment. Maybe close your eyes or find a soft focus. Hands come to our heart. And if you have the eyes closed, just relax the shoulders. Let your pelvis root down. Begin to feel that sense of heaviness from the waist down, root down, let go. From the waist up, you'll lengthen a little bit. Stretch the spine long. And take a few moments here to get centered, to breathe in, find your intentions, what brought you onto your mat today for your yin yoga. Two more breaths. And go ahead and open the eyes. And we'll start with a little compression of the spine. So our spine will be in extension. Go ahead and come on to your bellies. And we're going to come into Sphinx Pose to start with. My elbows will be directly under my shoulders, my fingers spreading widely, so I'm in a little wider. My arms are in a little wider stance, and then I broaden through the collarbones without a lot of effort. Remember, we want to try to relax and get into the deeper tissues, so I'm already in spinal extension here. And I'm going to hold it, let yourself feel heavy pubic bone releases down if you want to take a few little neck rolls feel fine go ahead and do that and then just hold still and just see what feels the best be curious does it feel best to tuck the chin and let the head drop look straight forward We're already stressing the spine just a little bit in a good way as we extend back in our little back bend. If you can, stay here for another five or six breaths. And 
with our next exhale, go ahead and release to the ground. Stack your forearms and rest your forehead. If, if it feels good, you can make a little movement with the hips, with the legs as you bend the knees and kind of rock the hips forward and back. We're gonna come back into spinal extension. And then come on back to Sphinx Pose again. If you're pregnant, you would do this on all fours or place a bolster under the thighs to elevate the belly. Elbows directly under my shoulders and I'm spreading through the collarbones. I'm in a gentle back bend and I wanna hold here Relax the shoulders down and away from the ears. Let the tops of the feet press down. And hold. Stimulating our kidneys, our back body, with this gentle compression. Remember in your yin practice, you can come out of the poses at any time. If it feels too uncomfortable, come out of the postures. Also at any time, you can make it 5% more comfortable, maybe by pulling out a little bit. And go ahead and come down, stack your forearms, rest your forehead on the mat. Maybe find a little hip wobble. Relax through the kneecaps, the lower back. And then we're going to come up into seal pose next. For seal pose, I want to take my arms wide and forward. Let the pelvis, the pubic bone, root down. Now to get a little bit more gentle here, you'll walk the arms a little wider. Reach a little bit more forward. If you want to get a little bit more extension, a little bit more back bend, you'll walk back. And the shoulders will come forward a little bit. Let the pelvis feel heavy. Try not to grip the buttocks. And hold here, chest forward, drawing the back of your ears back as you lift through the heart. Remember, at any time you can come out of it or come down to Sphinx Pose or walk the hands more forward and wide for a little bit less intensity. We're flexing through the spine, focusing on the meridians of the kidneys, the urinary bladder. Let the pelvis feel heavy, the pubic bone down. Go ahead and come out of it slowly, lowering onto your forearms. Stack your forearms again, and you'll notice that compression in the back. Maybe it feels a little bit different. Just feel those sensations. 
windshield wiper the legs. And then we're gonna press back into a child's pose. We're gonna use our bolsters, if you have one, or your couch pillow. Knees come outer part, my big toes touch. I'm gonna use my bolsters under my forehead and then let my shoulders relax. Sits bones on my heels. We'll just stay here for just a bit after that spinal extension. And then go ahead and inhale up. We'll come into saddle pose next. We're gonna use a couple props to help us get here. It's not an easy one. First, I'm just gonna sit up, shake out my shoulders, my neck, hands on my thighs to root down. Just close my eyes. Feeling a little bit of stimulation in my back. I already feel some gentle pulsation as we stimulate the kidney band, the meridians of and next, we're going to work a little bit through the hips, the front of the legs. So reach for your block or your books and sit up on it to start with. We can remove the block in just a bit. We're going to be stretching through the front of our thighs and also more extension of the spine as we come into saddle. If it's too much compression on the knees, Place a blanket underneath, or you'll do it with one leg at a time. I'll demo. So for me, I'm going to use my bolster. Go ahead and remove the block. And let's do with one leg at a time. Straighten one leg out, and one is right here behind me. Spread through the toes. Place the pinky side of the toe down, and I'm going to put my bolster up on a block on the middle height. Come down in onto my elbows, and then lay down the rest of the way in our half saddle. Close your eyes. Feel that stretch through the hip. Lengthen your knee towards the end of the mat. Roll the back of your head down if you're using the bolster. If you're not using the bolster, you're coming all the way down onto the ground, but make sure you did not over arch in the lower back. We want to stimulate through the hips, through the femur, thigh, bones, and then get into the deeper tissues of the leg, the hips. Focus on the liver and gallbladder meridians. Continue to lengthen the back of the neck. See what you can release, soften the jaw, spread the toes. Draw more space in through the rib cage, down through the leg, all the way to your knee. And soften. If you can do 5% less, what would you change? What would you move to get a little bit more comfortable?
Just a few more breaths. And we'll slowly begin to prepare to come out of it. I'm going to push with my hands, my forearms. And come on up. Heart leads. And unwind my leg. Bring my leg forward. And just shake it out for a moment. Nod yes, no. And we'll prepare for second side. If you are doing both legs at the same time, stay there. I'll show you that two legs at the same time, still rolling pinky side down, removing the flesh from the knees as I sit back. And I may need more height. I don't want to stress the knees out. I want to reach them to the edge of the mat. And then maybe begin to lay onto your cushion, your couch pillow, or on the ground if you're pretty open here, not to overarch the spine and make sure it's not aggravating the knees. If you were already on both legs, you might come up, give yourself a break, come seated and bend the knees. Focusing on those meridians of the liver and the gallbladder that control your emotions, your sleep patterns. Just two more breaths here. Take a big inhale. Press the ground away. Begin to come up. And unwind the legs. Reach them out. Out of your saddle pose. Bend your knees. And feet wide begin to make some windshield wiper motions really slowly kind of waking up the legs again and that could be a lot of compression on the back the knees so just always be real mindful as you hold these postures they are providing a little bit of compression traction but make sure there's not pain in the nerves at the joint and then come on up. Good. 
All right, so next we're gonna come into our butterfly pose and half butterfly. I'll face you this way. I'm gonna sit up on my blanket. You're welcome to sit on the edge of a blanket to give your pelvis a little lift. And then one sole of the foot's gonna come to the inside of my right thigh. My left leg will stretch out. I'll roll my inner thighs back. And we'll remain here. We're gonna lean forward a little bit, feeling the stretch in the hips. Again, you can use your blocks, your bolster, maybe lengthening down. You might bring it to a lower setting. Kind of explore here, knowing we'll be here for three to four minutes. You want to make it as easeful as possible while still providing that traction to the back of the leg, the hip. You don't want to come to your edge. Make this real sustainable. We're not trying to get to our biggest pose of the day. We're trying to hold, make it sustainable. Feel our body begin to change. As the muscles let go, the ligaments can stretch, release, and lengthen. Relax the shoulders, breathe into the back body, your kidneys, rib cage. Feel the back of the leg lengthen. I'm slowly going to inhale back to center and just sit up tall, relax. Notice the sensations in the hip, in the hamstring, the back of the leg. And then we'll move into the second side. Maybe come through, knees bent for a minute, stretch your chest forward, and then go to the second side. My Left leg's gonna come to the inside of my right thigh. Stretch through the leg, inner spiral your thighs, sole of the foot to my inner thigh. Maybe this will be enough. Maybe you come just a little lean forward and you might have two blocks right here. You might continue to lower your nose to a block, even to the ground, but less is more. I'm going to come on to my block and lean forward, relax my neck.
Breathe into the back body, fill up the kidney loop, the lungs, the ribs. Focus on those energy meridians of the kidney, the urinary bladder. And go ahead and inhale, come on out of this half butterfly and stretch long, look right and left, shake it out. And then we're gonna come into butterfly pose next, full butterfly. I'll face this way so you can see what I'm doing with my head so I can relax a little bit more. I'm gonna sit up on my blanket, soles of the feet come together knees come apart so this is it you may stay here in your butterfly providing a little bit of traction onto the outer hip inner thigh or adductor or where we're or we're going to begin to lean forward you might reach for the edge of your mat can continue to lean forward and then we'll be here for a little while, so it's nice to rest your forehead on something. A couple of choices. You can bring a block to your feet. Rest your forehead here. Or if you're a little bit up, a little bit higher, take a block and rest your bolster on it and rest your forehead with this lovely support so I'm gonna stay right here relax my shoulders away from my ears I feel gentle compression traction as I'm in flexion of the spine in a little bit of traction of the hips the outer hip stimulating our liver, gallbladder, meridians. Being careful the pelvis doesn't roll back but forward. So you don't want to roll back
Just a few more breaths. And then inhale, come on out. Press yourself back. Take your hands to the outside of your knees. Bring your knees together. Give yourself a hug. Rest here for a moment, feeling that compression in the hips. And then walk your feet wide again. Drop the hands. Begin your windshield wiper motion. Left, right. And then go ahead and come on down onto your mat. We'll move our props to the side. And we're gonna come to laying on our backs. First, just lay in traditional Shavasana and just feel the sensations, wiggle fingers and toes. And we'll place our body in banana asana. So I'm gonna walk my heels to the far left of my mat, to one edge of your mat. And then rock the shoulders to the left edge of your mat. So you're in the shape of a banana. You're feeling a little bit of compression on the outer right side, all the way from your armpit down the hip, outer leg. And I like to cross my ankles, but just explore, see what feels good in your body. And then inhale, arms overhead. If it feels good, reach for one wrist. Continue that stretch in the right side body as your heels and shoulders are on the left you're stretching through the right side making the shape of a banana relax the shoulders but continue to breathe through the right rib cage and then i think i'm going to uncross my ankles just so i feel more stable in the hips you decide what feels good Continue to breathe through your kidneys, back body, stretching through the side of the body all the way down to your ankles. Focusing on those energy meridians And then go ahead and walk back to center what would be a shavasana relax and just feel how your body shifted a little bit let your body feel heavy on the mat feeling that stimulation from your banana asana and let's switch to the opposite side 
You'll rock your heels as far to the corner as you can to the right side. And then pick up my shoulders and rock them to the right. I'm making the shape of a banana with my body. Inhale, arms overhead. Reach for your left wrist. Get long. Breathe in. And then begin to stretch through the side of the body. Relax the upper arm, though. The shoulder blade roots back down. We're stretching through the side body, the rib cage. Breathe in through the kidneys. Notice your liver, gallbladder. Continue to stretch to the side. Soften the breath. And come on out of it the next few breaths. Come to your Shavasana. And then hug the knees in. Just roll for a few breaths. Forward, back. Roll to one side. Come back up. Onto all fours. We started with a little final spinal extension. We're going to end with a little flexion and then we'll come into our Shavasana. We're coming into our swan or sleeping swan, which is kind of like your half pit, your pigeon pose. So I'm going to start from here. You can also lift up to down dog if you want. And I'm going to heel toe my right foot towards my left wrist, my right knee towards my right wrist, shin bone parallel or near parallel, I'm look back, spread through my toes, make sure that I'm not sickling the back foot, I'm spreading through the toes. My right hip is lifted, so I'm going to place a bolster underneath it. You can also use the bolster in front of you, keeping the length here Hips are squared, so I'm drawing right hip crease back, left hip forward. I'll come down onto blocks or bolsters, maybe a blanket. You can also use your bolster here, and maybe your hips are coming all the way onto the ground. And come into Sleeping Swan. If this is too much, You'll be up here with hands under the blocks. Let your hips relax and draw right hip crease back, yeah?
and the next few breaths will come on back up. And we'll come into a child's pose in between sides. I'm going to use my blanket to rest my forehead on. Bend to second side, your swan pose. And this time I think I'll use a blanket under my hip so you can take it from down dog or from tabletop. I'll heel toe my right foot towards my right ankle and left knee towards my left ankle. Spread through the toes inner spiral this back thigh and my hips a little lifted I'll place my blanket under my hip let it press down on something for that compression that traction and then come on down I'm going to use my blank my bolster to relax on for the next few minutes breathing in through your kidney meridian urinary bladder coming into the hip focusing on the liver and gallbladder meridians With our next inhale, we'll go ahead and pull on up. Come on up. And walk your legs to the front of your mat. Move your props if you are using them. And we're going to come into our Shavasana here. I'm going to take my bolster under my knees. Or if you want to continue to work the hips a little bit, you might have soles of the feet together, knees apart, and place a block under each thigh. And then try to let your body relax completely into corpse pose, Shavasana. Arms gently at your sides. You might start by making a fist and then releasing it pointing, flexing the feet or scrunching up the toes and then releasing, let it go. Shoulders come up to the ears, release, relax and soften.
and slowly, gently begin to bring your awareness back to your breath, back to your physical body. Begin to invite some small, gentle movements, perhaps touching your fingertips with your thumb, rolling your head from left and slowly back to the right. And then inhale your arms up and over your head. Reach long from fingertips to toes. Expand. Make a fist and then release the fingers flat. Point flex the feet. With your next exhale, hug your knees in. Give yourself a big squeeze, an offer of gratitude. And then roll over to the right side using your right arm as a little pillow. Draw the knees closer to the chest. Stay in a tucked fetal posture. Feeling the effects of your practice. Maybe you're feeling a little bit more open, softer, focused, with a little bit more energy. And then slowly roll back up to your most comfortable seat. I'm sitting up on a bolster. You can do the same or your blanket. And then draw your thumbs up to heart center. Thankful for this practice of yoga and of the practice of yin to help us ease, find ease in our body. Thank you everybody. I'm Letty. Thanks for being here in our yin practice today.